In this next tutorial, we'll be dealing with the gradient tool in Photoshop. As you'll see, the Photoshop default is the paint bucket tool, but if you press and hold on that tool, as you would with any other that ha have a small triangle at the base of them, you'll notice that there is another tool nested within that toolbar. And this time, what we're going to be choosing is the gradient tool. As you can see here, the gradient tool creates a gradient from one color to another color and gradually increases between the two. So in this case where we're using black and white, we will see a number of different shades of gray between those two, darker and lighter. As you can see up here, of course, as with any other tool, we have options for those particular tools. And in this case, the gradient tool shows a number of different options including the different types of gradients that you can be using, linear, radial, or otherwise, and the different blend modes that you could be using. More on that a little bit later, especially when you see the tutorial on layers and blend modes. As well, you can also affect opacity, but as we'll see, I'll be showing you how to create opacity specific to each color. We can also reverse the gradient, you can have dither checked or unchecked. And as you can see, what it does is reduce the banding, which means the amount of lines between are less noticeable. Transparency, of course, whether or not it's permitted. So let's begin with the gradient tool and notice that by default, I'm using the black and white colors here. And that has given me a gradient of black and white. Let's see how we can apply these gradients. You'll notice that the toolbar is this cursor. And what I'm going to be doing with this object at the moment is to drag it in any particular direction. I've chosen, in this case, a linear gradient. And as you'll see, the lines that are created in this gradient go in a linear fashion. Horizontal, vertical whatever the case may be. If you want a perfectly straight gradient, you can press shift to hold things in a straight line. And as you can see, we can also do that diagonally, among other things. Notice that you can also apply a radial gradient. In this case, you'll notice that the black area is centered on this object. And wherever I stretch this out to, you'll notice that if I make a longer line, the gradient increases between black and white. If I make a shorter line, it is a very small gradient, as we see in this case. Also, note that if I were to reverse the linear gradient, we'd have a decidedly different effect. Now, white is leading to black, and white is our center point. There's also other kinds of gradients, as you'll see here. One is an angled gradient, and this one's a little bit more unusual, but still can be uh, come in handy depending on what exactly you are doing with it. Some filters can be applied to this effect to create some interesting uh, files. There's also uh, another one which is referred to as the reflected gradient. And this one usually shows uh, not just merely one color going to another, but it reflects the gradient. So it gives sort of like a mirror image of this. This is wonderful for creating um, different interface elements that will work with gradients, in particular um, shadow and light to create a very um, angled three-dimensional look. And as you can see here, the last one is the diamond gradient, and that one might be useful for creating you know, space starscapes, but I really haven't used it all that much. Nevertheless, you'll probably get the most use out of your linear gradients and your radial 